Cyberpunk 2077 had a pretty rough launch, and by pretty rough launch, I mean arguably the worst in video game history. It was said that Cyberpunk was the worst thing to happen to men since conscription. But playing the game on old generation consoles was absolutely hilarious. This was the trailer they were showing the world, and this is what some people ended up playing. Truly immersive. It's okay though, because in the character customization, you could change the size of your package. Broken promises are quickly forgiven when you can give your virtual self a massive 5.5 inch weapon. The other half of their budget went to Keanu Reeves, which I'm not mad about, although he may have been. I asked my mate Zanny what he thought. Cyberpunk's like that gross ass Krabby Patty that looked nice at first. Apparently they've been trying to fix this gross Krabby Patty, so I decided it was time to see for myself. I load into my old save file and I'm at some diner. This guy wants to chat, but I've got better things to do. If you used to shoot people in wheelchairs, they'd stand up and run away, exposing themselves as imposters. I test this theory, but end up committing an accidental hate crime. It's customary to go on a killing spree whenever you play an open world game. I begin murdering everyone, except for the children. This wasn't an ethical choice I made, the game just doesn't let you kill the little malakas. Nothing can stop me except this driver who completely ignores the pedestrian crossing I was clearly standing on. This is meant to be a society. I spawn in the diner again, but this time as a well-behaved citizen. I need a ride, and then I spot the perfect vehicle. Embarrassingly, I realize that I'm naked, so I decide I'll head back to my apartment and put on some fresh clothes. I take a shortcut through a construction site and find this guy. This is what happens after four days of smoking marijuana. I reach my futuristic home and have a quick shower with quite depressing body language. Meet Thick Man. I put on the only clothes I own, and I just look so annoying. I just love to punch this guy in the jaw. Weird, as I created him about a year ago. Pelican of the past really letting the team down. I go and meet the guy from the diner who's just been sitting here the whole time. Get a hobby. He starts talking, but I power play him by making no eye contact and watching TV while he speaks. He then does the same thing to me and we're both just sitting there saying nothing watching TV. What is this, a long-term relationship? I skipped most of what he said, but I'm pretty sure he wants to smooch me. I decide to observe some of the residents of Night City. I find some homeless people dancing, and I've got to say, my boy is putting in work. Nice weather today. He's not wrong, it's clear, and not even a little bit humid. I then watch a corporate lady buy herself a can of drink and proceed to shelve it in broad daylight. I guess that is arguably the most efficient way to hydrate. This woman here is pretending to use an iPad. Apple can't sue you for copyright if you just make all their products invisible. That's a smart play by the developers. I head back to my place, but Kay Reeves keeps popping up everywhere. Only I can see and talk to him though. In the medical world, this is known as schizophrenia. Either way, it's time to go on an adventure. I quickly fix my character's appearance, going for an Amish-inspired look, and then head out to make some cash. I was keen to see what the open world has to offer, as I always enjoy going off the main path and finding my own things to do. I see a man called Reyes on the map. He's got a thick mullet, he lives in the desert, and he's got work for us. I violently steal a woman's car and make my way there. I can also confirm vehicular manslaughter is still a good time in this game, with the glitchy pedestrian deaths making it more enjoyable. I reach his location and ask him every single question and keep talking to him, but he won't give me a job. I realize after some time my game has glitched, so naturally I try to run Reyes over, but he's protected by magic. I then hop into his car, which makes my car disappear. Sick. So here I am in the desert, unemployed, driving a crappy station wagon. I proceed to drive off a cliff as I realize I'm going to have to play the main story, although people say it is one of the strong points of the game. I try and drown myself in this garbage water, but my character simply walks on the liquid. We have ascended to become Amish bin water Jesus. The main mission wants us to find a stripper named Evelyn. We appropriately start our search at the local strip club. Don't worry, I have the family-friendly setting on so that all the girls dress conservatively. This channel is still proudly the number one educational Christian music channel on YouTube. A bunch of modestly dressed hookers staunch me, but eventually let me inside. Thank goodness this woman has a pink jacket and beanie on. I can't tell if this is a gentleman's club or Bible study. Backstage in the offices, this lass tells me I should try looking at a different strip club called Clouds. We really are on a big stripper adventure. I can see why people like the main story. I'm about to take the lift up to the Clouds venue and then a street gang attacks me. I suppose they just hate Amish people. I have plenty of weapons and I gun them all down. I reach Clouds, but then notice a man is selling Whole Foods at a little stall. It's really chalk and cheese. A big organization giving out overpriced wristies and a humble lad selling colorful rice. I accidentally knock over all of his merchandise and he gets super sad about it. 
Practically, it just doesn't make a lot of sense, setting up a stall in some seedy corner next to a strip club, people aren't getting a lap dance and then picking up a bag of quinoa on their way home. The receptionist asks me to plug in and then scans my brain to see what kind of lover I'd like. At this point of my playthrough, I jumped on a Discord call for about 10 minutes with some mates and I got a little distracted. So their names are Sky and Angel, but when she asked who I wanted to visit, I said Angel thinking it was the girl. Long story short, I booked a male escort. I immediately say my safe word and ask him if he's seen my friend. He says that he doesn't know, but one of the VIP escorts upstairs might. On my way up, I hear people talking about how hot the VIP escorts are. I head up to the private room and there on the bed is another male escort. This guy isn't even wearing socks with his dress shoes. I thought the nudity filter was on. Thank God Keanu Reeves comes to save the day. It looks like he's meant to be leaning on the wall and his feet have phased through the floor, but great energy. Eventually, I work my way up to the manager who's a smoking hot babe, just kidding, another dude. Arguably still smoking hot though. He tells me about this ripper doc downtown who knows where my friend is. On my way out, I get hit with some sort of sickness. It makes my vision go crazy and I don't see things right. A K Reeves tries to consult me, which actually helps a little bit. I find a great park and make my way into the seediest part of the game I've seen yet. We were all thinking the future would be clean energy and hoverboards, but according to CD Projekt Red, it's just way more pole dancing. Elon Musk doesn't want to build a society on Mars, he wants to construct the ultimate red light district. I reach the Ripper Doc who knows Evelyn, and he's got a nice place here. I tell the guards I'm an escort who wants to see the doctor, and they let me right in. Most medical institutions have a clean, functional waiting room with maybe a water cooler and some indoor plants, but he's got a crack den. There's literally a dead woman on the couch. So here I am, deep undercover in the waiting room. Not the gameplay experience I expected. I'm eventually allowed in, but I'm a little sick of cutscenes, so I just start punching this guy until he tells me where Evelyn is being held. He spills the beans, and then I have the option to either punch him again or let him go. I choose to punch him, and he dies. He needs to put up one of those signs that says, abusing medical staff is unacceptable, so this sort of thing doesn't happen again. With my vision and entire screen still glitchy and messed up, I realize I need help. I find a trustworthy straight shooter downstairs and he sells me a new brain chip that should sort me right out. It doesn't work and my screen is still scuffed. Sick or not, it's time to save our ass shaking homie. I decide to carpool to her location with this lass who's our mutual friend. Always good to save on petrol. Her tattoo says, underwater where thoughts can breathe easy. This makes me hate her immensely. The thoughts come from the brain and the brain needs oxygen so the thoughts would actually drown. Water is strictly for drinking, showering and occasionally treating yourself to a hot bath. We arrive at the facility Evelyn is being held at. You can do this mission stealthily and fortunately I'm a slightly below average gamer so I breeze through breaking everyone's necks. You can even hide the bodies in various containers, it's Hitman from Wish. My driver decides to start helping and she can apparently teleport around. I genuinely don't know if this is a glitch or if she has some sort of teleportation futuristic implant. I get bored with the quiet approach and start shooting every single enemy in my path. I do wonder what this game is like without the profanity filter. We find Evelyn and she's taking a power nap which is a great way to recharge so that she can catapult herself into a productive afternoon. It looks like she got into the meat pies with a little too much tomato sauce, what a silly goose. We take her to a safe location and give her a nice bed to rest on. All the health packs and ammunition would have been worth it if she'd just said thank you. I guess they took her dignity and her manners. I walk out into the rain and my screen is still glitching. At this point it's been bugging me for a couple of hours. I looked online and it turns out the game was just broken and I needed to restart. I thought it was some cool story thing that I had to figure out how to fix. I was out there buying new brain chips but it was just yet another glitch. I decide to take out my frustration on the children. Now as we know, the kids in this game are invulnerable, but I decide to make it my new objective to make them pay. First I try all the basic methods. You can't physically shoot at them. Still, I throw grenades at them and do my best, but like cockroaches during a nuclear winter, they survive. My next strategy is to get behind the wheel of a car and ignore the pedestrian crossings myself. The devs were one step ahead yet again, however. As soon as you hop into a vehicle, all the kids despawn. I tested this numerous times and there's no way around it. Splattering the little tater tots simply isn't going to work. Stage 3. I figure if I can start a gunfight with some police, then maybe they'd get caught in the crossfire. Again, I tested this over and over, but they are simply too strong. Almost out of hope, I spot a little ninja wannabe playing hopscotch. In a beautiful moment, my boy slips and hurts his knee. He may still have a pulse, but at least he's injured. 
<laughs> this is too dark. I had my friend Snowoff download a mod for his PC version of the game where you can just instantly kill anyone. When he used it on them, they just did a holy T pose, so it looks like they don't even have a death animation coded into the game. The youth win this round. In summary, Cyberpunk is such a weird game. In some ways, it's actually really, really good, and in other ways, it's ridiculously bad. I didn't even show all the glitches I had during this playthrough, but you likely won't go a few minutes without seeing something wrong. It's been well over a year since it released, and it's still way too unpolished, which is disappointing. If you love story-based games with lots of talking, then it could be fun, but I'd be more inclined to play something else. Like, ironically, The Witcher 3. We're doing a one-question go on my Discord server this week, and I'll put some of the best questions in a video. If you want to be involved in that, the link's in the description. Otherwise, I love you, and goodbye.